next item is the Local Government Association Tasmania General Meeting. Now it is 7 o'clock. We are probably in for a long one. Okay, we'll, another one, we'll do another one and then we'll, we'll see how we're going after that. So the Local Government Association Tasmania General Meeting, for those playing along at home, the, it's on page 40. And um, in this motion, um, basically what we're doing is asking the councillors to tell uh, to direct me how to vote at the LGAT meeting, which is to be held next month. Um, do we want to... How do we want to do this? The motion reads... Oh, it's up on the screen. The council... Uh, the council advised the mayor regarding voting at the upcoming LGAT general meeting as follows. Do we want to move to discuss someone so we can do this? Move to discuss from Councillor Midgley, seconded by Councillor Westwood. All those in favour, please say aye. Those against? Motion carried. Uh, so do we want to talk about planning authorities first? Any passionate views for or against? Um, at the moment, my, my plan would be no, but does anyone want to speak? Anyway, let's to try and avoid long debate. Um, just, if anyone thinks we should, um, speak now. Councillor Westwood, are you going to speak for this? Um Yes, I um, quite like this. Um, motion. Um, I found it quite difficult when I was elected to council to become an instant member of the Kingborough Planning Authority. Um, I certainly rely very heavily on the recommendations of our staff um, and I find planning is a very complex um, area which um, our planners have university degrees to be able to um, do and I, I'm not sure what the answer is, but I do certainly um, relate to a comment in here which, which refers to wearing two hats. And um, I find sometimes as a member of the planning authority, I am bound to make a certain decision based on the act that I know full well the community might not necessarily support. Um, I guess that works, works the other way around as well, uh, but I can relate to this and, yeah, I don't mind the idea of of someone else doing it. Councillor Reid. Um, I've got a question which I don't know whether you can answer or not. Just following on from what Councillor Fox mentioned earlier, I was reading this as if um, our council staff um, with their qualifications in that relevant area would still make an assessment but then the decision would be made by an independent panel that is appointed. Is that how... Am I reading that process correctly? Uh, well, Mr Arnold, what did you, how did you read it? Uh, through you, Mr Mayor. That's exactly, exactly how I read it, Councillor Wright. Thank you. If that's the case, then I do support this um, because I believe that it is very, very difficult for us at times and I can think of many occasions over the last um, eight or nine years where we have been placed in difficult situations because we do wear two hats. And it is always, I've tried to separate that as much as possible and I have um, had to then, uh, I've been forced to vote for things that I do not agree with and it's very difficult for the community to understand that. Um, and I've also seen situations where councillors haven't um, separated the roles like that and they have allowed their opinion on whether they like something or don't like it coming to it and have voted accordingly. And that is a very messy situation to deal with. And that's where we end up with appeals and appeals and appeals. So the idea of separating the, the two I think is a sound one and I would really like to see us support this and I would really like to see this debate play out at Legat and what the State Government's response to this would be. Clearly it, it is underway in other jurisdictions and it has worked and I think that um, we would be doing ourselves a disservice if we didn't at least allow the debate to take place. Okay, uh, given that we now have thought it was going to be pretty clear, uh, you, can, you can speak on either direction now. Okay. Councillor Cordover and Councillor Mitchell. Thanks, Mayor. So very briefly, I don't want an independent panel. I think councillors are capable of wearing two hats. They've done it for years in Kimbra, and I think that's actually quite a good way of making sure that you don't end up with a position of um, 
I guess, unelected and faceless panels making decisions uh, that are unaccountable to the elected, to the, you know, the population that can elect them. I think that we have an inbuilt mechanism in democracy to um, remove, you know, people that we think are making faulty decisions that aren't in accordance with the planning scheme, and, and that's called the elections, and, and they're in October of 2022. So. Because I don't want an independent panel, just checking with you, Mayor, that means I do not want to provide as an alternative the establishment of an independent development assessment panel to determine a permit application, and therefore I'm correct in thinking I should be voting no. I'm asking you to vote no. Thank you. Councillor Midgley and then Councillor Street. Thank you, Mayor, and thanks other councillors for sharing both sides, which I do sit on both sides of the fence in this, but I am interested to hear it's staffs. It's, it's not helpful, but I am interested. I'm leaning more to no. But I am interested to hear um, very knowledgeable staff around the table um, in regards to the risks that they see us in voting. Just yes. so happens we have the former CEO of Elgar here, Ms Stevenson. Um, this is certainly not a new topic, and in fact, uh, in my previous life, I took a very similar debate um, to a mayor's workshop or a general meeting. I can't remember which one now. And the rationale at the time was uh, the feedback we got in a post-election environment from new councillors who felt very torn about their ability to represent the community uh, while wearing the very um, straight ruled planning hat. Um, in, terms, uh, in terms of benefits, I think it does free up councillors' time to dedicate it more to the strategic land use planning aspects which I think is what shapes communities, not the development uh, applications alone. Um, on, the, on the other side, some of the issues raised um, by other elected members from other councils in previous debates included the fact that local knowledge meant you could influence the conditions um, of applications in a way that might not be possible for for someone working on a regional or a statewide basis, they wouldn't necessarily um, be able to nuance um, the permits. Um, I, there are different models and some of them work better than others. I certainly think um, there needs to be a local government voice in any panel, uh, not necessarily the council who've, who've got a, an application before a panel, um, but it does mean that councillors, if, if they're not having to consider the DA, they can be advocates for or against an application. So um, that, that's really the two sides of it. It can work. Um, it needs to be the right model. Councillor Street. That's a very good answer. Councillor Street. <laughs> uh, thank you, Mayor. Um, look, I agree with Councillor Cordover on this one. Um, and I've said it a hundred times before that in planning matters there are always matters um, to do with the planning scheme on which reasonable minds might differ um, and so I think it's important that that councils have a role to play in terms of um, making decisions where reasonable minds might differ and using local knowledge and using the feedback of the community to make those decisions on matters where reasonable minds might differ. There's no doubt that there are clear-cut parts of the planning scheme. Um, you either meet an offset or you don't meet an offset. Um, you either meet a height limit or you don't meet a height limit. Um, but where we talk in terms of um, development intensity and um, what's a reasonable use for an area, um, these are things where, where you know, there is a, a bell curve of opinion um, and we get put on council to make a decision across that bell curve and people vote for us based on where they think we're going to sit and where we tell them we're going to sit. And I think that that's really important. Um, and it would concern me to remove that to an independent, albeit professional panel, where ratepayers and residents don't necessarily have that input into, into where they would like decisions to go um, on those matters where reasonable minds might differ. Um, so for that reason, I'd vote against um, investigating this further. Councillor Was. Thank you, Mayor. Thank you, I, al Bustow. I also support the no on this particular item. Planning at times is not easy, 
but at the end of the day it shapes the municipality. Now we talk about looper, the land use planning. It would have a land use planning and we'd have no effective tool to administer it. We talk about our planning scheme. We would have a planning scheme, but we have we would have no effective tool to ensure that the planning scheme was met. From time to time, we have set strategic directions for the development of this municipality. No point doing that if all of a sudden we're no longer going to be involved in planning issues, because planning issues, regardless, will go their own way without any reference back to us and where we want to take and where, the, most importantly, the community want us to take the municipality into the future. When we start looking at costs, we can look at the additional costs. Does that mean how many um, of these special boards, if you like, are going to be established? Is there going to be one for each municipality? Is there going to be one for each two, for two councils? We're talking about a legal and a public administrator background chair. Don't come cheap. Two or more specialist members, I take planners, won't come cheap may include a local government and or community representative. So if you're paying the others, you've got to pay them. All of a sudden, it's going to cost us the same as it costs councillors' allowances to set up this board. From the general public, what do they want? Do they want someone to control and administer going forward or do they want a council? My suggestion is they might well want the planning board and get rid of the council because the council having no effective uh, operation into the future that they want of this municipality. We talk about the future directions. We've spoken about years to come to keep away from uh, ribbon development through our towns. If we set up a board and that was to occur, we can stand back, we can yell all we want, the community can yell all they want, and it will go ahead. Sure, they will get appeals the same as we do, but at the end of the day, I believe that we vote with the planning scheme, and I think it's up to each and every councillor then to explain it to our community residents why and how you did that particular vote. And the more and more I see of this, I think it's a, an escape by one or more councillors who really find planning too hard. If they find planning too hard, perhaps they should vacate as councillor and let someone else in who wants to do the work. Councillor Bastide. Thank you, Mayor. Um, I'll be supporting a no vote on this. Uh, I keep coming back to that uh, the fence at uh, down at Kingston Beach, which under the, all the planning rules was disallowed. They spent, was it 26 pages of why heritage architects and thank goodness sensible councillors who knew the area and knew that it wouldn't be destroying it were able to get it through. Now, I think that's one of the things. We know our area. We, we might not know, I might not know every street in Taruna, uh, but I might know every street on Broody Island. You know, I mean, we, we know our area. And I think it's very important that the councillors are the ones that make this decision so that we can say we were part of it. Good. Thank you, Councillor Lester. Um, any other contributions? I, I'm going to. We, we're only going to vote at the end. But so, what I've heard here is the majority are a, a no on this. So when we move, because we've just discussed, we're going to. Someone's going to move a no, um, and uh, and then we'll we'll vote on that. Uh, okay. Just do a quick informal show of hands for the um, yes. Raise your hand if you're a yes to voting for this. Yes because there's only two. If you're a no, please raise your hand. Yep, so we've got a pretty heavy majority for no. Um, future gaming...